Kevin? No. It's Iowa. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining this executive meeting. We're pitching this movie idea uh, for Alien, a sequel. I, I know you love all these characters, but they, we're just going to start. They, they got to die immediately. What do you think? Yeah, that that's great. And if we can have a bunch of just anonymous people that nobody's going to care about when they die and um, some shoddy CGI, that, that would really work for me. I think that would really be well, a big success. I don't want him just to die. I want him to die terribly. And then maybe, I don't know, autopsy? Yeah, the little girl you loved before. We're <laughs> oh, going to cut yeah. her open. Watch her die. Yeah, let's mix everything that happened in Aliens. Yeah, that, let's do that. That's what the audience want to see. All, all that hard-earned emotions and success. Let's just... All, over all right. There. If you can tell, we're talking Alien 3 on the Pot of Dreams. Was there an alien on board? Yes. There's definitely something in here with us. We have no weapons of any kind. Start. It's here! All right, thank you for joining everybody to our podcast where we talk movies, The Pod of Dreams. If you listen, we will pod. Today we're talking Alien 3, uh, <laughs> the sequel to probably the two greatest sci-fi movies ever, Alien and Aliens. And boy, is this movie rough. Um, I, that's all <laughs> That's all I really have to say about it. So I watched I'm this. I'm this for Scum Deliberate, and that's all I have to say that's about that. That's all I have that. to say. <laughs> Life is like a box of chocolates when an alien bursts out. You never uh, know what alien movie you're going to get, you know? Yeah. Is it is it a weird One looking alien? One of the best ever, or is it terrible? Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I watch, so I watched this movie, picked it for this podcast, because Fincher, is, he's got a new movie come out recently, and I hadn't seen this for a very long time, and the Alien and Alien movies are, like, some of my two favorite of all time. And so I really didn't have, like, a great memory of this. It came out in 1992, correct? Mm -hmm. And I know I didn't see it in the movie theater. I was 10 years old when it came out. But I know I loved Aliens at the time, and I think it was one of those where I was trying to push my parents to let me go see it and didn't didn't work out. So I probably saw it some time later on VHS, and I remember hating it as a kid. I I, I just had this terrible memory of it. And rewatching it now, I think I hate it even more. And wow. actually, I, I have subsequently watched Alien and Aliens with, like, my kids, and it made me hate it even more. So it's like a triple-down, cubed hatred towards this <laughs> movie. Um, I, so that's my initial thoughts. What do you What do you guys think about Alien Cubed? Well, it's traumatizing, and that, I think that's kind of the point. They're trying to shit all over everything that you like about Aliens and make it so that it's just painful to watch what happens. And then uh, it's a bunch of bald British guys that you can't distinguish from. Nope. Um, and the one bald British guy... More like guy, rapists and murderers. <laughs> yeah, and the one bald British guy you actually start to get to know is is murdered halfway through the film. So there goes that. But it's it's a Fincher movie, and it's it's got his little fingerprints all over it. It's got that darkness that he's known for. It does and, feel a little bit like a Fincher movie. A little. I mean, there's a little, like, sprinkles of Fincher in it. Yeah. Sure, just a little bit. But I think we should add that caveat that David Fincher has disavowed this movie. Lots of people that worked on it have disavowed it for good reason. Maybe the true Fincher cut would be much – well, it'd have to be better because yeah, this movie is really we terrible. Should specify, so we I think we all watched the theatrical, theatrical version – there is an as- assembly cut. Is that how yeah. what yeah. it's called? Yeah, where they, they did yeah. their best to recreate Fincher's vision. And it has to be better than this because this 
This movie it's, is bad. I don't think it is. I really don't think it. I haven't watched the full thing. I've watched like like a side by side of what the difference is. I don't think it's any better. Oh well, then fair enough. I guess this, but this version is straight up awful. Nothing goes anywhere at all. None of none of the plots matter. I mean, we spent half the movie. Ripley has to convince the guys that the alien is real. And then we just have the alien come in and just chop the guy. And then so we're done with that. So what, what was the point of that first hour? Nothing that happens. She just investigates to try to confirm that there's an alien. And that whole thing unfolds stupidly. Yes, her and Charles Dance have a relationship. And it's one of the things that's a little bit interesting. It's not super interesting. It's not this is great. But okay, I'm a little bit intrigued. And then he gets chopped off an hour into the movie. We set up all these guys as like vaguely Christian monks who are trying to be reformed about their horrible murder and rape in the past. And then we like, Oh, here comes, you know, Sigourney Weaver's here. Ripley's here. Oh, well, what's a, what's going to be the effect of her being there? Well, we get one rape scene and then it's never talked about again. There's no reconciliation. It doesn't, it's pointless. We talked about bring out the dead, how like the, those individual scenes worked and it didn't quite coalesce. These are all these dumb little things that don't, work individually or together. I mean, just nothing. It's just, there's almost nothing I liked about this movie. I mean, it's, well, it, and I, the plans that they had for capturing the alien never made sense. I didn't know what the point of any of their machination was, except right. for cannon fodder for, uh, for death. Yeah, I think, I think a couple things that, are just worth noting. So this movie essentially takes place immediately after Aliens. And yep. if you remember how Aliens ends, which I just watched, like the huge battle with the queen, don't get away from her, you bitch. There's the whole thing in the yes, mech suit. dueling mothers, right. No, it's yeah, great. It's, it's incredible. And they escape with uh, Hicks, Michael Bean, who's you know an all-time 90s action guy, and he's great in Aliens. And Newt, who's probably one of the greatest kid characters maybe ever in the history like of movies. Like, only good one. Night, mostly. She's great, you know. They're yeah. dead, okay? They're all dead. Like, she's amazing in that movie. And so you exit aliens on, they all go back into cryo sleep, and this movie kicks off where Newt's dead, Crash, face hugger on, on Ripley, Hicks's face has exploded, and, you know, we made a little joke in the beginning uh, before the podcast started, where the first like scene where Ripley kind of wakes up and realizes what's going on is she wants to see what happened to Newt, and they have an auto like they cut her open. This little kid who you loved in Aliens, they cut her body open, and it's just it's so awful. It's like torture porn almost. It's like the worst possible. Like why are you do why are you doing this to me? Like I'm just I just want to watch your movie. Why are you torturing me? And they do nothing like with this? it. It's not like they want to clean the slate for some really. Into, they, there's nothing. They it's, do all it's that like for they, nothing. They hate you as like fuck you for buying a ticket to this movie or for watching this movie. I hate you so much. I'm gonna put you through this like awful experience because fuck you. I don't care. It's, it, it is one of the w- most wild choices that Fincher ever thought, like, hey, we're going to have her die. Okay, all right. But no, that's not enough. We're also going to cut her open and make sure you see her little dead body. Like, <laughs> It's really one of the most bizarre, like, almost offensive choices I can ever remember in a movie. Yeah, like, you can't imagine a movie a sequel made like this now. I mean, sequels are made for more sequels nowadays. And this one just like, okay, everything yeah. you liked, we're just going to end it. And then spoiler at the end, you're Ripley, the great, one of the greatest also female characters in the history of movies. She also dies, right? Like everything, di- everybody dies. It's all over. Everything you cared about is done. You stupid idiot people. Thank <laughs> you for your point? money. I mean, we do the like, Oh, Wayland corporation is evil. Or are they not? like, of course they're evil. Why? There's no tension there. It was, wasn't, I've never seen the movie before, but I wasn't like, oh man, maybe they're really good now. Maybe she should trust so, them. It's like obvious. Had you had you <laughs> never seen like Alien Resurrection or any I've of them? I've only ever like, seen the basketball scene from Alien Resurrection oh for some reason. God. I don't okay. know why that's the only one I've seen. And I've seen Prometheus, but I didn't see the other one that was after well, Prometheus. Prometheus is a prequel, I think, to even the first Alien. Well, yeah. sure, sure. I'm just talking. I'm just listing Alien movies that I've seen. And the Alien but Covenant you, is the one that you didn't see. Then okay. But yeah, did you? You didn't know Ripley died. 
No, I didn't know. I, I think I knew what well, I, kind of, I kind of did because I think I knew she was resurrected in Resurrection, that she was cloned or something. They do something weird with her DNA. Yeah. Um, so I assumed she died. I wasn't like, oh my god, they killed Ripley. That wasn't a shock. What, what else were they going to do with her character at that well, point? Well, it was a anyway? shock to young Eric Lane, it sounds like. Well, sure, sure. If I were, I hated it. If I were a big fan of Alien and Aliens, and then I saw this for the first time, it would have been devastating. I mean, I, I, I don't have the same reaction, but it just feels so pointless. Everything about this movie feels pointless. I can't. None of it makes any sense. It's it's really aggravating how it all unfolds. Just even from the way the face hugger, right? It it hugs the dog, right? Okay, that that's a dick move, right? To show a dog getting face hugged. I mean, that's, that's a tough, aggressive move, but it just doesn't work at all in the context. Like it's horrifying. But the guy who loves the dog never checks up on the dog. He sees that the dog is sick, but then he's cleaning the vent and he never checks on the dog. Nobody ever notices that the dog's guts are splayed everywhere. Nobody ever checks that out. The dog's just sitting there like its carcass exploded because it would it would obviously indicate something weird was happening and it's an alien. So instead, he's cleaning the vents and then he sees the shed skin, which disappears after he dies. Nobody else ever sees it again. And we just have to die stupidly, slowly. We don't think the alien exists. We think you're lying. Well, it's just it's in the it, that's those are the beats of the first movie. Except then, like nobody knows anything about it, right? They're 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 totally ignorant to what this thing might be. Nobody's right, even but they really know it's something. It. They don't think it's yeah. made up. They don't understand what it is. But they're yeah. like, this is a lie, or you're crazy, Ripley. Nothing like they're like something fucked up's happening, and we just don't understand it. Um, here it's yeah, they they just suppress it, and then we're just okay. We're done with that. We spent a while not being sure if they were real or not. Now we know they're real. And you mentioned, like, the faceless British guy. This is one of the huge problems with the movies. Like, Alien and Aliens, we spend so much time getting to know the characters, right? We get to know the, the crew of the Nostromo. We get to know, like, the military folks. You yeah. form a relationship. You can, they have characters and personalities. They're complex and they're interesting. When they die, it's sad and it's frustrating. Here, you don't care about any of the characters. No. I mean, I didn't even care about Ripley, really, at this point. It was like, yeah, it, with everybody that she cared about dead... Was it, what was it, what would you hope for Ripley in that situation? It's like yeah, just I guess go out swinging. I don't know. What, what, I mean, I just couldn't figure out what the point of any of this was. Like I, I was just constantly, what were they thinking? I don't get it. I just don't get this movie at all. I was just gonna add the other thing that occurred to me, which was kind of mind blowing, is if you if you look at this, this movie from like Ripley's perspective, and you think about the so the first movie. You, you know, she kills the alien and then goes into hypersleep. And then she's supposed to be gone for like 10 months, but ends up, I think it's like 57 years or something like that. Right. And then wakes up. And then, so to her, it would be like the next day, right? Like she went to sleep and woke up sure. and then goes on this whole ride with the military to kill this other alien, which is basically like the next day for her. And then she fights all the aliens and aliens. I think at one point they say she hadn't slept for like 24 hours. But like to her, it's like the next day. And then she goes back to sleep after killing the queen and wakes up and then this happens. So to her, it's like three consecutive days. It's like one day she's fighting each alien. You know what I mean? Can you imagine? Because for us, it's like years have gone by when these movies happen. But for her, it's really like just three, <laughs> three days. Yeah. Like, can you imagine having gone through that, those three day the experiences in three days? Like, you'd be like, fuck, I'm just, uh, kill me now. Like, Jesus Christ, all these aliens, I'm done. Yeah, on you that, wouldn't put me in hypersleep, that's for sure. On that front, shouldn't Ripley be just a lot more devastated about what happened? I feel like... But she was about nude. I thought she did a good a job about bit, that. A little bit, a little bit. I, th I, I think well, for me, it's just like, holy shit, I can't believe you did this. Like... It's more shock than anything. But yeah, but, but she only knew nude for a few hours. Really, that's the other thing. If you think about it, like from the from aliens, she they go to this planet to find these colonists. She finds Newt. It's like a span of six hours before they kill the alien and go back in hypersleep. So she really only knew the girl for a few hours. Yeah, but it was. I mean, the movie invests you in that relationship, right? She becomes. A chance to be a mom again, right? Because she missed out with her kid. 
because the shuttle, you know, skipped past Earth or whatever happened. Uh, Wait, what? I don't isn't that why? That isn't that why it took her fifty-seven years to get back instead of ten months? Or wh- why? Why did it take Ripley fifty-seven years to get it back? Got, to- the ship got lost in space. Right. So it, it just took a, a, the wrong path. I, 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 well, I think when she fought the Queen, her ship got. Damaged. No, I'm talking about between Alien and Aliens, right? Like, yeah, I know. I, that's what I'm saying. She didn't she, fight the Queen she, and Alien. But okay. or what, the Alien. She jettisons the Alien from the escape pod, and in the process it damaged the ship, and so it's floating in space when it should have been back to Earth in 10 months. Got it. Okay, it wasn't – propulsion wasn't correct. But my point is she missed out the chance to be a mother and that, you know, like her kid grew up. Didn't she have a kid? Doesn't she have a daughter if it's – I don't know if there's ever a reference to that. That's what I was uh, curious about what you saying. Oh, I thought I thought for whatever reason she had like a kid to go back to, but the kid was like really old at that point. But maybe I'm just You're thinking that. interstellar, dude. Okay. I guess. Okay. I I don't maybe you're right. I don't, Kevin, do you remember anything about Ripley having a child on Earth? No. Oh. No. Okay. Okay then. Because I don't think for her she's not supposed to have aged, right? You, if you're in hypersleep, you don't age the same. Right, right, yeah. Right. I in, in my head she had or a cryo kid. sleep or whatever. She didn't age, but her daughter did and got really old. Is what is what I had in my head. But maybe maybe there's a sleep. reference to that in like Resurrection or something. I don't remember that in Aliens or this movie. Okay. But. That would be devastating though. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, like I said, inter- I made a joke about Interstellar, but that's what makes that movie so, like, traumatic, is when McConaughey comes sure. back, his daughter's, like, older than his grandmother would be. Okay, either way, she loses out on, uh, she's going to be a mom to Newt, and that doesn't end up happening because of Alien 3. Uh, because I guess a facehugger snuck onto the ship that we didn't see at the end of Aliens. Um, no, it's a, it's an aggressive choice. Is the alien in this movie supposed to be dog-like? Yeah, because they kind of bond with whatever that gave birth to them genetically. Because yeah, in, in Aliens, dog. they are sort of humanoid-esque. They you know, kind of move like humans, you know. Yeah, I just was I'm trying to think of what the movie did with that, really. Like, it runs on all fours. I couldn't... Other well, than that, I didn't know what else here, it did that was canine. Here's major problem number two with this movie, is they tried to introduce CGI, and it looks absolutely awful oh. Oh, yeah. i mean like legendarily bad it, you might as well have just drawn it up like a cartoon like a roger rabbit shit because it looks so bad and i think that's you know this is the beginning of where they tried to replace like costumes and effects like practical stuff with computer and it just it's only been downhill from here i think i mean it this was the start of just an awful trend in movies Blame Terminator 2 because they made it look so good in Terminator 2. This is like a year. I came out a year for this one, and it looked awesome. Um, but in Aliens, not a single computer-generated oh, image, yeah. and they look incredible. Like the alien. That's the be- one of the best parts of the movie is the monster figures and how they look and sound and. Yeah. Oh yeah. In it's this like, movie, it's computer blobbed. Almost no good shots of the alien. I can't think of like maybe one or two. There is right after Charles Dance's character is murdered, and the alien goes up to Ripley and like sniffs her uh, out. Yes, that's yes. one of the most famous, yeah, famous scenes from the Alien movies. Yeah, that it almost gives that her is a very kiss. finchery, and it looks amazing. That is a great looking scene, and it realizes that she's pregnant with the queen. The queen, yeah, and so it doesn't kill her. Yeah. So I I don't know. There's a if you ever, guys ever listen to the Blank Check podcast, I hate you know hate to promote another podcast yeah. on here, but like they Horrible. they go in they go in heavy deep on like the production of it and sort of what happened and why it happened and how you know the stuff with Fincher and how he you know didn't want anything to do with it and what they made him do and how they made him change it and I don't know I I have watched some pieces from the assembly cut. There's like the the beginning scenes more extended like it's longer. Um, before you see the alien, and then there's more stuff about like the people on the prison, but it doesn't really add a whole lot. It actually like you you don't care about these guys. Like I think that's the worst part of the movie is introducing these guys that you don't give a shit about. 
and then the ending's a little long. It's a, just a longer version of this. I don't think it really makes it any better. It's like a half hour longer. Okay. Well, didn't the middle the middle thing worked where they actually did catch the alien, right? And then and then I think and they catch the alien and then one of the prisoners lets the alien out is the main difference between the assembly cut and the theatrical. See, yeah, yeah. because I was reading some stuff and it, it looked like, yeah, they played up the religious angle more <clears throat> and they so, sort of viewed the alien as the devil and punishment. And that, that would have been more interesting to me than whatever this was, which is none of that. It's not anything. There are no themes of anything in this movie. There's nothing. It's just a, in some ways, like a tiny retread of earlier movies, but way worse. But it, it's also like really confusing because they're not really even prisoners anymore, right? They're just <clears throat> they just stayed on this facility because they didn't want to leave. So it's not e- they're not even really st- prisoners, and they're not forced to be there. And that's confusing to me. I I don't know. Like I think <clears throat> you put an alien on an actual prison and let it just like wreck shop and kill bad dudes and like. It's like Con Air with an alien. Like, okay, may, I, maybe that's a better movie. I... Yeah, well, they didn't want to spike the budget with too many people, I think. They wanted to keep it low. Yeah, and it has that feel, too, where it's like it sort of feels on the cheap. You know, there's they like reuse the same hallways over and over again, and all the guys are sort of dressed the same and look the same. And, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's just a, it's a bad movie. It really is. Yeah, it's it's off to bottom. I mean, yeah, you mentioned the one shot, Kevin. I I, I kind of like that the one crazy guy lives. That's sort of interesting. Like this random character lives. That's a, a tiny bit interesting. But it's like I I have to scrape and claw to figure out um, anything. I mean, there's just nothing here. There's nothing to chew on. The action sequences are confusing, right? You mentioned that earlier. Like they're gonna light the hallway on fire or something. I, I, I couldn't understand exactly what they were trying to do with the explosive stuff. And then they run through the corridors at the end to try and trap it into one section. And it, that was disorienting in a really bad way. I couldn't tell who was doing what, where. Um, and then it, it, what was the alien doing? And it hopped. I mean, it just could not track the action. It was incomprehensible to me, almost every sequence. And I think they knew it looked bad because they, they really don't show the alien very much. I think they just tried to get in and get out because I just think they knew it looked goofy. On a side note, um, I'm going to go back. So on the extended cut of Aliens is where Ripley learns that during her 57-year-long stasis, her daughter, Amanda, grew up, married, and died. So it's not in the theatrical cut of Aliens, but in the extended cut. I've never seen the extended cut. So there's a scene where she finds out that her daughter like lived her full life and, and died, you know, got married and um it's part of the reason why she's like, well, fuck it. I guess I'll go back out into space because um, I can't, you know, my kid's dead. Anyway, I, I didn't think I was making it up. I didn't think it was a complete fabrication. It's in there in the extended cut of Aliens. It's like it's just a brief scene where she finds out when she gets back. Um, sorry, that's that's more interesting to me than, than Alien 3 because I, I, I mean, it's. Well, I think Alien 3 is interesting for the choices it makes. Um, I, I don't understand them, though. That's what baffles me. I mean, yeah, it makes all these confusing choices. Because it's a badly made movie. But... <laughs> right, right. Well, wasn't Fincher, like, in his early 20s, too? <clears throat> he was when 27 he made this... when he made this movie. Good Lord. And he's got to he's gotta make a, a, the third movie in a franchise that's been... Incredibly lauded by you know two yeah Rid- he's got to follow up Ridley Scott and James Cameron <laughs> and meanwhile he's got a bunch of studio executives absolutely on his ass telling him what he has to do yeah there wasn't a sc- finished script uh, as I recall when they started <laughs> filming this so that's, yeah that's and that would make but, sense but part of me like <clears throat> I I think you can you know shift some of the blame I, mean, I think Fincher's got to take some of the responsibility right like it shouldn't you wouldn't think it'd be that hard to make a sequel to aliens you know just maybe more aliens and let Sigourney Weaver fight him I don't know I, I yeah but I 
I don't think David Fincher had a lot of clout. So, I, yeah, you can, I mean, maybe it's a somewhat of a cop out, but like, you say he's 27. I, what did he direct before this, right? Like, some he's music got, videos, right? Yeah. Like, so he's some guy they got that really they expected him to do what they wanted. They didn't get in our tour. There was some talk early on in the development process about getting Ridley Scott back, but it didn't work out with timing. So they didn't get Ridley Scott. I, you know, I don't think James Cameron had any interest in, in going back to the franchise. They wanted somebody young who could do what they wanted. And he had a vision, I think, probably, that but got swapped. Why, why can't you get James Cameron back? That, I, that's the thing I don't understand. I don't think he wanted to do it. I mean, I he, I he don't know. He spent the next – after. I mean, he's, he spent so much time – in a sci-fi world with aliens, you know, avatars. He was working on Terminator 2 Judgment Day all throughout this time, which is uh, uh, an infinitely superior movie. Because it's not his original. He didn't own it. I guess that's probably the simplest answer. And he probably didn't have a good idea for a third movie. He wouldn't do it just to do it. He probably didn't think, oh, man, I've got a really, I mean, I, he probably. Well, why doesn't enough. the alien ever come to Earth? That. So in the early development, there was talk about yes, getting the aliens to Earth. That would be the the obvious escalation. I mean, Get why Michael doesn't Bean an back. alien ever fight a predator? Like, come on. <laughs> well, I let's try. I, that. I have seen that. I have seen that. I have. That's another alien movie that I've seen. The the Requiem, Alien vs Predator. Two of them. Yeah. Is there two Alien vs Predator movies? Yeah, one's yeah. PG thirteen. You guys ever stupid. play the the arcade game, the Alien vs Predator, the side scrolling? <laughs> four-player arcade game back in the day? No? No. I don't think no, so, okay. no. It, it was amazing. amazing. It was yeah. like the X... Did you ever play the X-Men arcade game? The side-scrolling? Oh, of course, oh, of course. yeah. It was exactly like that. Okay. Except you could pick an alien or a predator and just run around and kill shit. What no, actually, just... I think you were all predators, That's if I remember right. I think you were Fighting all Fighting aliens. I was like, yes. well, if you're aliens and predators, what do you fight? No, no what are your we adversaries? were all predators. Yep. Um... Because like like this, so William Gibson is a guy had a first crack at it. A guy named Eric Red had a crack at the script. David Tui, uh, Vincent Ward had a crack at it. Walter Hill and David Geilers. I mean, Walter Hill was involved in the original, right? Uh, I guess or, I, don't, or, I don't know. And Aliens, I think he's involved in the, both the first two movies. And Fincher did some work on the final screens bay, but um, you know, people were fired. Walter Hill and or anything final rise that worked on by previous. I mean, you see, um, I mean, you see the evolution because originally it was, was going to be that it was going to be a, a two part epic thing. Michael Bean was going to get back to Earth, and then Ripley wasn't going to show up until the fourth one, and it was going to be just just more more of aliens basically. You're going to have more aliens, more fighting, more action, and then they just went back to we've got to get Ripley back in the movie. Um, she's got to be the star. She's the franchise. And I, it's just like just got more. We need Ripley I, to fuck and then die. I, I, you basically. Let's let's chat about that. So she goes to bed with Tywin like way too fast, right? Well, see, that's part no. of why I'm like she's not in a state of grief. She's just gonna bone him really quick. I mean, just immediately she's like, hey, all right, let's fuck. I, you know, you just cut open this girl that I really cared about and. <laughs> I'm on a planet full of rape. It was this was before she got raped, right? Or was it after or attempted to get raped? I can't I can't remember. It was the, before the attempted rape, I think. Uh, sequentially. Um just awful choices. Just awful choices for a movie. Really really actually makes me mad the more we talk about it. But it's it's aggressively you don't, you don't like, bad. You don't like a woman showing her sexual freedom? No, it, I do, and believe me, Sigourney Weaver for me is like all time, but like those little underwear that she had on in the first two movies, like you know, that that changed a twelve year old Eric, I'll tell you that. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. But then just to jump right in with Tywin. Yeah. It, that, yeah, that, it didn't make sense. I mean, she did Hicks didn't she didn't she had some real chemistry with Hicks in Aliens and they didn't jump jump in the the pod together or the cryo chamber that. together. Maybe she regretted that. Didn't, didn't want, want it to happen it. again? Yeah. I mean, he gave her the little bracelet and was like, we're not we're not engaged yet. And there was some real heat between those two. There True. was. I See, this is where it's just baffling, right? 
So Charles Dance, right? The the love inch, the 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 recipient recipient. There we go of uh, Ripley's aggressive sexual advances. He said that they they filmed an alternative ending uh, for Alien Three because the one that we got was too similar to Terminator Two: Judgment Day. But they ultimately didn't do the alternate ending, and they went with the one that was like. Oh yeah, with the lava. Yeah, it was, I, lava. I thought that the whole time it was like, okay, this is the T two ending. She's going into the lava. She's not doing a thumbs up. She's yeah, cradling even, the alien. It even instead. gets like metallic, right? Because they fill it with molten, like yeah, metal, molten like molten lava. metal. Yeah. No, but it's like metal, right? Doesn't he jump out and he's like covered in metal? Well, that's right before that, but yes, he yes he well, he I'm gets saying, like in... the comparisons to T two are just like. Way too close, right? What was, oh, it the, is. I, what was the alternate ending going to be? It, I, it doesn't say. I mean, I'm just. This is some shoddy Wikipedia. It doesn't say, but they decided. Oh, okay. ah, we don't care that it's is basically identical in a, almost every way, other than she's not giving a thumbs up, but she is smiling. <laughs> she's like happy to be dead at that point, which makes sense because what does she have to live for at this point? Like, sure, let me take the queen with me, and we'll die. I do <laughs> know. Shrug. Like from the Blank Check podcast, they were talking about how they had to film some stuff afterwards, and I, I don't know if it was the ending or not, but she she like couldn't cut her hair again because oh, they'd have some to other, pay her or something. Yeah, there was some like fee that they were going to have to pay her, and so it was like you know like I don't know ten grand a month or something like that, and so then they had to do this like elaborate bald cap. I couldn't really tell the scenes where she had a bald cap on or not, but you know it's just one of those things like. Just pay her to yeah. cut her hair again, and then have some real reshoots. Well, or just don't make it where she has to cut her hair. I don't know. Yeah, I know I, that was like a big shock. Oh my god, Serena Weaver shaves her head. Oh, there's a lice problem. How are she going to respond to a lice problem, Eric? You got to shave your head. Bugs in space. That's all what aliens is. I, yeah, yeah, is that the like the comparison? Is the aliens are basically the infest, infestation, the bugs, like the lice? I don't know. It's stupid. I thought yeah. it was a cool look to have her shave her head. That is, I, I that's about the only thing I knew about Alien Three was that she goes bald, and I, I remember yeah the promos of her being bald. I this movie needed to make some choice. It needed to make a very crazy choice. Like, it needed to make it uh, something. Like, you, you go bigger, fine. Make it a comedy. Do something. Take some risk. This is, like, awful. It's just this horrible pastiche of just all these nothing plot points. It it really is a uh, Well, and it's not, even a, it's not even like a horror movie. Would you no, even it's call not this a horror movie? It's not horror. It doesn't really do the action. Yeah. It doesn't do drama. It doesn't do anything. Like, that's where it's just, like, pick a lane. You want it to be about these guys trying to deal with their sins and feeling guilty about their crimes? Do that then, if that's what you want to do. But it doesn't do that. You want to make it do the whole who's the alien really there? Are they like go that direction? Make it more less obvious that the aliens around. Make it make it ambiguous. Make it so we're not quite sure. Film doesn't do that. I mean, just just does not do a single thing. Not not action. The explicitly no guns. Uh, that was the thing I think that Sigourney Weaver said she didn't really want guns to be a centerpiece of this one, which is part of why they have no guns in the facility, right? So they have to be creative with how they're going to stop the alien. But it's not about religion. It's not about action. It's not about anything. It's just nothing. It's a big flat nothing. It's shocking to me how there's just nothing whatsoever in this movie. But. So- I haven't seen Prometheus in a really long time. I remember kind of liking that one. Yeah, I like Prometheus. It's much better than this. Does that one, because that's Ridley Scott, right? That's him coming yeah, back. He, yeah. Does that movie presuppose that, like, the aliens are the first life forms in space? Isn't it something like that? Or that the original creators of life created the aliens to destroy humans or... Well, so there are these yeah giant bluish white aliens. One of them kills himself, um, and then like that becomes the building blocks of life, right? That that's the like initial protozoan or whatever. You know, On Earth, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, the correct. DNA. correct. The first the first organic molecules on Earth. Um, I mean, there's some... there's 
there's plant life and stuff. It's a very lush green world, but oh. they seed. Yeah, they seed the other life that comes. From what I remember. Oh, I, I remember. He he eats something and then he like decomposes into water, and we see the molecules just get pushed in this river. Um, but yeah, okay. The first non-plant life, fair enough. But basically, he created humans. This this other race, right? They're 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 creators of humans, and then eventually we get enough technology advanced that we go out to find them. Um. And we confront one, and then he can, kills uh, what? What's the name? Guy Pierce. Um, and I think here's some stuff I found out. This is not anything that's in the movie. It's probably too weird and got cut for that reason. Um, apparently, these people, these this creator race, was so disappointed. So they they. <laughs> I, I, it's hard to verbalize because it sounds stupid, but. Uh, Jesus was actually brought to their world and taught their ways and how to perceive reality and how to be peaceful. And Jesus came back. Is this head canon or is this actual? No, this is extended cut DVD stuff on Prometheus. This is not head canon. <laughs> so Jesus was abducted and by then... these aliens, came did back, prob- and was. Did they probe him? Did Jesus get probed? Don't know anything about probing. I well, don't know that's what, they what did happened to him. to him for like 30 years. That's why we don't hear about him until he's like 30. Right. So then he comes back and he preaches. He's like, these are all the ways we need to be. This is how it can become a better civilization. And then we, of course, kill Jesus. So they create a bioweapon to ultimately rid us because we're a disappointing creation. And that's where the aliens come in. Uh, the Xeno Xeno forms Xenomorphs. Xenomorphs. Yeah, because we see the first one, it's like just a weird, you know, it's a weird mimicky DNA sort of thing, and it sees a guy, and it merges with, um, I think Naomi Rapace is her character's name, and we start to see the first Xenomorphs come along, and that's I think the origin is. But it's, again, creator race is disappointed in us, wants to kill us. Uh, we stumble upon it and interact with the bio weapon, and the byproduct is the Xenomorph. So there you go. So wait, the, so they created life on Earth and then wanted to kill life on Earth. Correct. They're like these guys are you guys are greedy, warmongering bots. You guys have not been advanced. You, screw you guys. So Jesus is responsible for the aliens, or or the what aliens we did are responsible Jesus. for Jesus. I don't no, know. I mean, I mean the xenomorphs. The Jesus. What happened to Jesus is why we have xenomorphs i guess according to ridley scott yes oh it's all pontius Pilate's fault uh well a funny sort of side tag and so i watched the first two movies with my kids mm-hmm. and uh the first one when uh what's william hurts choking and you know all of a sudden the alien pops out of his chest <laughs> and it's got the little teeth my daughter's like Oh, it's kind of cute. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. That's your takeaway from, from this scene is the alien's kind of cute. wasn't scary. It was just kind of cute. Was yeah. she wa- Wait, did you guys watch Spaceballs by accident? No, I saw space- no. I saw Spaceballs before seeing Alien, so it was a little less shocking <laughs> when you encounter Spaceballs before Alien. Not what year ideal. did Spaceballs come out? 84-ish? Okay. Somewhere in there. But definitely after Alien. I may have seen Spaceballs before Alien, but I think I saw Aliens before all, I, any of them. Because Aliens is like 86, 87, yep. something like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I would have been too young to have seen that in the theater, for sure. But Yeah, for me, this is a movie that has an idea, at least. Uh, I don't think it works, but at least it goes for something. It has a goal in mind. It tries to get us there. It works as kind of a sci-fi horror. It it's at least does that, unlike Alien 3, which does none of that. Does nothing. Yeah. I mean, Alien 3 needed something like you know, the Bill Paxson, just some guy who's funny and crazy, and just some sort of personality. It's so drab. It's it just is. so, like, blah, and there's just, like, these great hallways and bald heads. It's like, ah. Oh. Yeah, just... well, one of the best characters, Charles Dutton, he's just way too serious as well. But he has a I mean, heroic he's end. Good. He's, he's good. He's very good in the movie. Yeah, he's he's well cast. He's one of the only ones with an actual personality and charisma. But but you first time you meet him, he's like I've raped women and killed babies or I don't know whatever he says. <laughs> like 
Yeah. It's just like, all right, dude, just holy shit, chill the fuck out for two seconds. Jesus Christ, we just met you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't want to be tempted, I guess, by have by talking to a woman. They should have had it be like a female prison. That would have been a better, better idea. Caged heat, no. says <laughs> Eric Lane. Get more more shots of uh, Ridley in her underwear. I mean, I'm I'm not saying no to that. I don't know. All right. Well, I want to talk about the coolest scene in my mind is when she reboots Bishop and he talks. Yeah. Yeah, that's that actually amazing. a visual effect. Yes, it looks cool. It does look cool. I can see that. Although I, it was also pointless. We just need him <laughs> to tell. We need him to tell us that there's a xenomorph in there. Okay. But she's gonna do the like ultrasound later on, and the alien's just gonna burst through. It's. Yeah, I think I think the biggest problem too is like we already know what's happened. Like we oh, know yeah. we know what's happened thirty seconds into the movie. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't know, and none of the characters know, but we know as the we already know what's going on. There's no mystery to it or suspense. Like we already know what's happening. So it's not it's not like a big revelation halfway through the movie, like, oh my god, she's got an alien in her. We already know that. We saw the face hugger in the first two seconds of the movie. Yeah, so what's the point of making it a mystery for the characters? Like why does that help the story? And I don't see I don't think it does. I think it gets in the way of you could introduce the alien earlier and just make it clear, okay, yeah, there's an alien, and then do something with that instead of spending an hour yeah. with the characters, like, not sure. And, well, I don't know, maybe. Well, just just have the, the face hugger have, you know, got the dog and have, you know, do the alien thing and never reveal that she has one and have that be this, like, holy shit, she had one the whole time, you know what I mean? Sure, like, but just... when, the, when the queen grabs her, you're like, why didn't the queen kill her? We, I don't know. And she starts to wonder why, too. And then she, you know, goes back and sees there was a dead face hugger in the ship, and she was, you know, impregnated. Like then it's a mystery the whole time. You're not like waiting for it. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, that would be a meaningful reveal. Like, but just let them find the dog early. Like, okay, there's an alien that, here, guys. That is one thing I did watch the the assembly cut. It's apparently like a big boar or big hog or something like that. An ox. An think. ox. That's right. Yeah, and it looks really bad when it dies. Wait, what? What's an ox? What do you mean? Sorry, I missed the that, that the alien gets on an ox and not a dog in the oh. assembly cut. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. See, so, like, do something with it being a dog, right? So, have it have the alien like hesitate, poke his head out, and see that it's like the his former buddy, and like pause for a second, do something. Have it hang that out for like one brief instant before it snaps. Like, is something. Ripley should pay fetch with the alien. I, so that'd be better. I, I, that would be an actual risk. Get a like, frisbee? Get a frisbee out there? Yeah, sure. They, they figure out they can distract the alien with just, like, throwing a frisbee. And then it just it yeah. can't help itself. It throw it right into the liquid molten It, it gets metal. distracted with dog biscuits. You know, like, oh, yeah. okay. That'd be more interesting than anything this movie did. Take it for a walk, get a little collar, and take it outside. Like, if it won't hurt Ridley, does the, does can the she just alien not, like, poke pee? it with a stick or What's something? The... Like, it's yeah. not going to kill you. Like, just try to agitate it. Do something. Poke yeah. it in the eye. It, I, I don't know. I'm just going to be sad that it won't kill me. Kill me now! I don't know. I don't have a lot to say. This movie really bummed me out. I, I didn't like it. It's a mess. It's an absolute... Mess. I, I give boring. it. I think I give it a one and a half stars, maybe. Yo, Tom Bien. I give it three stars because it's wow. uh, it does something that no sequel would do nowadays, and I I found that, that a little bit refreshing. You can't imagine like Captain America three, where it's like everybody you care dies, he dies at the end, you're all fucked. Like you could, that would never happen now. We're freezing Captain America again. We're going right. to the year twenty ninety. Everybody else dies, and he survives into the future. That's it's a true. bold choice. It's a very bold choice. But it, if it did something with it, cool. But it just it does takes this risk and then does absolutely nothing with it. I mean, it just it's the, doesn't it's do the anything. It's the last Jedi of 
Alien movies, if you ask Dodge me. Dodge Jedi takes way more risks than this movie does. Uh, it has way more... Way I mean, more risks than killing Newt and Hicks and Ripley? This movie does it. It does something oh. bold, and then it doesn't do anything with it. What's it... What's the commentary What's on the Last Alien Jedi do with it? What's Last Jedi do with any of those choices? Luke Skywalker does. It doesn't make any difference anything. It's but a whole commentary need, about where his... the Star Wars franchise okay, is yeah. and how lame the stories have gotten and how they're well, trapped in a I, I Skywalker think, struggle. It, honestly, this is not if, that. You no, know, if you listen to the blank check, that was like a big intent of this. Is like It's a reflection of the Alien franchise and what it has become. And like... Like the 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 sort of metaphor for studio meddling and basically saying a oh, fuck you to the studio and you know base essentially saying franchise filmmaking is awful let's destroy it and end it which is sort of what Last Jedi is saying right about some of the Star Wars choices like let's kill it let's move on and get rid of this I think I think it was very actually a very similar type of movie. I'm not sure I totally buy that. I mean, we think about where Alien 3 was. I mean, you have two beloved movies. Nobody thought the franchise was stale or boring or trite at this point. Nobody's nobody's like, God, we're sick of the Alien movies. Golly. I mean, one came out in 79, then one came out in 86. And this one came out six years. I mean, this is not like they're cranking these out every even two years. So if they did it with the intention when, when of did, like... Uh, when did the Star Wars movies come out? 1977 is the first one. Okay. And then when did uh, Phantom Menace come out? 1999. Huh. <laughs> and I'm not sure what point you're did, making. When did I Force Awakens know. come out? 2015. Huh. I'm not sure what point you're making. I really don't know what point you're making. I don't know. Timelines kind of match up a little bit. There's a big gap. I don't know. It's the same thing. This would me. be like Return of the Jedi being like, we're bored with Star Wars enough. Golly. This would be like that as opposed to... We're now on our 10th movie with Last Jedi, whatever it was. This would be like you'd make the movie now to say, screw you, these alien movies are boring and dumb, and we're cranking these out, and they're not any good, and they're just so lifeless. So there's supposed to be or like an alien show, I think, in the works. Is that right? Do I have, or is it a movie? Uh, the guy that made Fargo, the Fargo series, is okay. uh, he's supposed to be behind the next alien thing. Alien Romulus, I think is what it's called. Okay. Okay. Um, Oh, so it's going to be a TV show, not. I think that's the plan. Let me, let me just do. What a are they possibly going to cover in Alien Romulus? What? See, if the whole point was about F, an F you to the Alien franchise needs to happen now. It didn't need yeah, to happen in 1992. Actually, supposed to come out this year, 2024, August. And what's the plot? Does there a plot synopsis at all? Uh, I don't see one. You'd think there'd be, like, a trailer coming out pretty soon. Um, but, but if the goal was to kill Ripley so that they didn't have to tie themselves to Ripley for new Alien movies, then I guess, okay. But then they just bring her back with DNA in the next one anyway. So who cares? Yeah, it's kind of like the uh, killing the Emperor and then just having him just sort of reappear for no reason. <laughs> so that is not speak. a Ryan Johnson problem. That is not a Ryan Johnson problem. That is a J.J. Abrams choice. That has nothing to do with The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi killed the stupid villain, if you recall. So, yeah, this is this is different. So this has nothing to do with the show that I think... It, so this is a... Um, it's a horror film standalone installment between the events of Alien and Aliens. Okay. okay. So it's a movie. It's a film. Oh, God. Okay. Huh. See, this is, this is Star Wars' worst impulses. Hey, what are the most popular and best alien movies? Alien and Aliens. So let's set a movie right between those two so people really care. Oh, that's just awful. I mean, something will be happening with the alien. Is it about the colony that gets infested with Newt? Is, it, is that what it's going to be? Could be. We're going to see see how that all went down. God, God, I need to see that. Yeah, so Noah Hawley is also developing a TV series for FX, which is an alien prequel. Uh, I don't think there's a release date on that. So this is like a 30 years before Alien prequel. So they're never going to do an Alien on Earth, sounds like. I don't know. I think that I think you're onto something, man. I think that's the way to go. You're right. I, I don't know why they haven't tried that. I, I, I don't know. I guess because once you go there, there's, no, there's nowhere else to go. 
you know, once the aliens get to Earth, you either have to figure out a solution to the aliens or. But you can do Earth. like a like a big giant war between. Sure. The, like a star. You guys ever play Starcraft? Probably not. You guys aren't. I know what it is. I never played it, but I know it's. But yeah, it's like one of the big, you know, uh, one of the like races you can play is like an alien thing that just infests planets and attacks. You, know, you can just do like a big giant world war aliens. There you go on Earth. That was, I think, part of what the original view for three for Aliens three was. You were going to have a big epic conclusion with the aliens finally reaching Earth, and then it was going to be a big showdown, and Michael Bean was going to lead the charge against the aliens. But, well, that sounds like a good movie. Yeah, I, uh, you got my ticket. I'm paying for that. Well, you can <laughs> argue with the studio executives who, in what was this, 20th Century Fox in 1989 or whatever, didn't want to pay for it, or I don't know. Yeah, it would have been better than this. This was, I don't like. Yeah, I, 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 I just wish there were more actual risks taken. It's just nothing. This movie doesn't know what it wants to be. It's nothing. This, this reeks. This movie reeks to me, Eric, of meddling, of eight different people wanting eight different things and insisting those things are in the movie, and then Fincher having to try to cobble it together, and then you just get this mess. Any final thoughts on Alien Cubed? I know. Watch it. Go watch it. It will pass the time. Um, you'll watch it, and then two hours will elapse. So if that's your goal, <laughs> this will help you achieve that. If you want to watch a movie that wants to say fuck you to you, then then watch this. Yeah, it's, it's definitely in that line of films where you're like, you can tell whoever made it is just, I hate you for watching my movie, and I'm <laughs> going to make you sit through something that's going to hurt you physically. Jeez. But you took well, it Fincher's, Fincher's like, I mean, he, he's kind of a, I don't know what you'd call it. Where he he, pu- he pushes buttons. He's a, God, I don't know, I don't know how you want to phrase it, but you know, he's definitely the kind of guy that likes to make you uncomfortable when you're watching his movies. You know, I mean, to have Gwyneth Paltrow's head in the end of the of seven, like that's a choice. Like that's a that's painful. You know, I, I think I think it's in, in those lines where he's like, I'm pushing your buttons. Is is like his sort of vibe. Sure, like, but I didn't get any button pushing vibe. Like I know, okay, we're undoing I mean, it makes, aliens. It makes you feel something, you know. Uh, I just see. I, I wish. I wish I felt something. Pr- provocative is maybe the way you'd phrase it. I don't know. That would if this movie were provocative, that'd be interesting. But it's not provocative. It's just kind of drab and dull I, and lifeless. I think having and, an autopsy of Newt is pretty provocative. I think that uh, upset you more than it upset me. It's like okay. Where are we going with this? Oh, apparently nowhere. We do this. Oh, okay. She so she thinks there's no aliens for ten minutes. Okay. It's this. The, just, okay. Well, they did it to upset you. Is the real point of it? Well, yeah, I guess that didn't work I, on me. I guess I did, I wasn't as emotionally devastated as apparently Eric was. Well, maybe, I think it's upsetting to see a twelve-year-old or whatever age girl being. Uh, Autopsy. I, I, I honestly can't say I've seen that in any other movie. So uh, that, that uh, yeah, okay. That, that's an interesting but like, take. But for, for me, Alien and Aliens are like five star masterpieces. Of course, like, sure. They are some of the best, like literally the best movies ever. And made. they're so different in tone. Yes. And and this one is a different shift in tone as well. Well, and like like you said, you got. Ridley Scott, James Cameron, and David Fincher, th- three of the maybe best filmmakers. You could make an argument that those three guys are, like, top tier Hall of Famers, you know? Maybe not okay. in the, like, Spielberg, Scorsese camp, but they're up there, you know? They're maybe in that lower tier behind them. Sure. They, they're they epic female characters. Christopher filmmakers. Nolan, I mean, of, of course, is on the top of the mountain And, and there, QT. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 1A and 1B, respectively. What do you think if I was like Christopher Nolan is making the next Alien movie? I think it'd be good. It'd be interesting. Yeah, he's done sci-fi. I think it'd be really good. I, Christopher Nolan is one of those guys. Whatever he does would, would be interesting. I not, he he couldn't do a project that would would sound uninteresting to me. Like, all right, that's what he's doing. So sure, James Bond, fine. You want to tackle the Alien franchise? Great. Let's see it. Whatever. I did hear his musical? next movie might be a horror horror film, like a straight horror movie. Okay, sure, sounds good. Romantic comedy. All right, I want to see Christopher Nolan's romantic comedy. <laughs> I want to see him do a comedy, straight yeah, up. Sure. 
slapstick comedy. There'd be some time time jumping, I bet, involved. <laughs> no, but let's have at it. Where the Scots try. I mean, Oppenheimer's a laugh a minute. That's a pretty hilarious movie. Yeah, it's very oh. funny. I've That's become like death. Square worlds. That's a riot. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I guess we'll close the book on Alien 3. It's also, so it's like Aliens is the sequel to Alien, but Alien 3 Alien is the cubed. sequel to, Alien Cubed is the sequel to Aliens. That's kind of confusing. And then, is it Aliens? Res, no, it would be Alien Resurrection. So Aliens is the only one that has the plural to it, right? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking too much about no, it. No, you're right. It, it is, I guess. If some marketer decided like, that that's how it should be. Again, is it Captain's America or Ca- Captain America's? If you had more than one Captain America? Like, <laughs> like Attorney's General? Is it, you know what I mean? Like, I like Captain's America. I don't know. I like the way that flows better than Captain America's. That feels like, yeah, I don't know. That feels like yours. You have one captain of like North and South America. Yeah. So if you have Captain's America. There's several of them. It's his America. Maybe you throw a little apostrophe in there? No, now we're getting weird. <laughs> All right. Uh, so are we do, we're doing another movie or, or we're done? No, nope. this is the last <laughs> one. Last episode. We're going out on a super high note. I've got a movie for you guys. Perfect. You do? Yes, this is one of my favorites. Whenever I'm bored and want to watch something... This this one is frequently what I'll put up and take a looky at. Um, it came out in 2008. Okay. It uh, has a Rotten Tomato score of 42. Interesting. It. Uh, I was gonna say The Dark Knight, but. I want to say Tropic Thunder, but that it, it, Tropic Thunder has a higher score than that for sure. Yeah. It, well, its budget was 120 some million. And it only pulled in 91 million worldwide, so it was a critical and a financial failure. Okay. And uh, like it. it stars Emil Hirsch in the title titular role. Oh, I know what it is. It's Speed I Racer. It. Yes, it's Speed Racer. Oh my God, I've been itching to rewatch this movie. Oh, I don't man. think I've I don't think I've ever seen it. I'm is gonna, this I, the, the Wachowskis, right? Wachowski's make... sisters made it, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, well, I'll let Eric discover it, but I think I, I'm, I'm already hearing Eric's review in my head. Um, I I, I th- honestly, I thought it looked awful. That's why I never watched it. I thought it looked, like, really bad. That's where you're wrong. I, I Oh, man, I'm excited. I mean, I, I saw it in the theater. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Whatever that is, 15 years ago or whatever. So I'm excited to revisit it and see if I, it is as good as I remember. I mean, I was like a big anime person, but I never watched Speed Racer. It was just one of the animes I never watched. Yeah, it was one of the original ones that came out. Yep. Like I watched Dragon Ball Z, all you know, a lot of lot of animes, but just not. Nerd alert. Okay. The only Speed Racer other than the movie I've seen are like clips on on Twitter where it's showing. Speed Racer is some kind of like sociopath or like YouTube. There's a whole like subgenre where they just take clips of Speed Racer out of context and just make him look like a sociopath. They'll just say something just like really awful and dismissive. Oh, and that's hurtful. Funny. That's really. Um, There's like a monkey, right? Doesn't he have a monkey? Chim Chim. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's got a monkey. No, that makes sense. <laughs> what? What doesn't make sense about having a monkey? While you're racing <sighs> your car? Okay. I know you're not an Emil Hirsch fan. This, this is a problem. Is I know movie. Eric doesn't like Emil Hirsch. Yeah, I, I don't. It's I'm not season. a fan of his. That's a guy whose career just like absolutely Ooh. eviscerated from this thing. Yeah, he's problematic. That's problematic. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. But kind of okay. a piece of shit, huh? He's kind of a piece of shit. But you know, I separate the art from the artist. This is prime art. Right well, here. he was like a, like the it guy for a, a minute. He's like Timothy Chalamet before Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, after Into the Wild, I think that's when he, he was like pretty hot stuff. Well, he did that one. There was that one comedy movie, uh, Girl Next the, Door or something. Yeah, like that. The, with the porn star next door. The, yeah, yes. yeah, that was like a big big deal. And then he was doing Killer Joe a couple of years later. 
And now I think he makes like straight to video Mel Gibson movies, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh no. Okay. I Seriously, actually liked In- Into the Wild. I I like that movie quite a bit. I think that's a good good flick. Even though it stars somebody you don't like, you were able to look past it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So why don't you like Camille Hirsch? I just don't like his vibe. Don't it's just like, it's like the Paul Rudd thing. It's just yeah, like it's Eric. Paul, gets, I don't, Eric don't like his vibe. It's fine. Bill Paxton is like that for me. It's the biggest oh, strike. Bill Paxton is unbelievable. How could you not like Bill Paxton? He just, he, I always see his chat from Weird Science. Every role he's in. It's why like, don't you oh, put her in charge? <laughs> Game <laughs> over, man. Game over. Oh, God. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Twister? Rest in peace. Yeah, R.I.P. <laughs> Please Bill do Paxton, rest in peace. Bill Paxton, is, in what Paxton. Paul, is what Paul Rudd wishes he was. Honestly, Paul Rudd would beg God to be half the actor that Bill I think Paxton Paul Rudd was. already made a deal with the devil to never age <laughs> and to be just in a bazillion movies. So I, I don't know. I don't think Paul Rudd's trading his career for Bill Paxton's. Personally, I'm going to start the anti-Paul Rudd campaign. <laughs> Should, you, know, you and like five other people. Yeah, there's a lot of us out there. There's dozens of us out there. <laughs> a guy that keeps going to movies because everybody just kind of likes him. It's just a general happy vibe. But yeah, no, it's it, there's no logical reason. Eric just doesn't like Emil Hirsch, whatever. But Okay, well, we'll I think we'll, this will be easy to watch. I believe it's on Mac still. Oh yeah, I've been I've been seeing it, it there. I'm like, yes. Does it look cool? At least like it's a Wachowski bro. I think movie. it looks well, incredible. Cloud, At- Cloud, Cloud Atlas was hot garbage, so it looked good it, though. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. It, it's I, I think it looks incredible visually, but it's a certain. Not everybody's gonna agree that it looks incredible because it's a particular high octane, super bright vibe. So you'll, but you'll, is it you'll... just CGI blobs? Like, what was the Spielberg movie, Ready Player One? Like that? I thought that movie looked like trash. It looks way movie, better than Ready Player One. Yeah, that movie did look like trash. This this has a certain panache. It has a, a look that it's going for. It nails. You know, I think so. I mean, yes, we'll, exactly. We'll talk about it next week. But like, has there been a really great anime to film adaptation? I yeah, can't, it's I called mean, there, Speed Racer. Okay, well, we'll talk about <laughs> Speed Racer, but... Are you not I, I hearing you, me? Speed Racer, motherfucker! I, th- I think you're part of the dozens of people that think Speed Racer is a great movie, but... I think there's more Speed Racer fans than anti-Paul Rudd fans, I'm going to say that. I, it's just surprising, there hasn't been a great anime... Tra- it's, it's hard to translate. It's because animation can yeah. do things that live action can't, so no. The Dragon Ball movie was, I think, horrible, I never saw it, it looked god-awful. Well, it, a lot Live of it is action, wh- last Airbender trying to make them terrible. white people movies, right? Because like, <laughs> well, I mean, like they were gonna make Akira, which I think I I think Akira is the greatest anime ever made. Like I think that oh sure, I th- incredible. I think but they would make it with like a bunch of white dudes, and it would just it it wouldn't work. But how you know? would you it's make like, that visual style replicate that in a live action movie? You could how would do, you do it. That? You could do it. I doubt it. I think Akira is doing things. Look at Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner 2049 looks absolutely incredible, and it's this whole world. You could you could do the same thing with Akira. I just think there's no way it looks as cool as the. I don't think I don't think there's any way it looks as cool as the Akira anime. I just don't think that's possible. You can make it look decent. Denis Villeneuve could do it. I mean, he he could do it. Maybe he's too busy making Dune. Making incredible Dune movies. But, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's interesting because do you think there'd be a lot to take from anime and there's not, not – just really hasn't worked other than yeah. Speed Racer, of course. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to talk Speed Racer. We're going to see how Eric tolerates it next week. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.